Hey folks, I'm Michael Vertries of Tennessee Permaculture, and this is the Carnivore Permaculture Homestead. Welcome. Uh, this is, I've started documenting my carnivore uh, diet <laughs> plan. I did this once before. I talked about it in yesterday's video. Um, I thought I would just try to get on and explain a little more about you know what's what's going on here. So everybody, I think, knows what a homestead is. Basically, I have a rural property capable of raising meat, and that's important to me to us because the, as the old adage goes, you are what your food eats. So we know that our animals are raised in a humane and sustainable method. We uh, know what food goes into them. We know uh, if they have to be medicated or not, and we don't have to just medicate them because. So, And they get to live out in the woods and have a much more fulfilling life. You know, the, the Joel Salton calls it the chickenness of the chicken and the pigness of the pig. So that's pretty important to us. And also, we believe it makes for healthier meat and tastier meat, too. Uh, a lot of people, especially people coming from the carnivore space may not be real familiar with the term permaculture so i actually uh wrote it down wrote down a definition here so that i can kind of you know transfer the the meaning a little more without fumbling around like i'm doing right now so uh, permaculture is an approach to designing sustainable and regenerative systems that mimic the patterns and relationships found in nature the goal of permaculture is to create self-sustaining and self-sufficient ecosystems that meet human needs while regenerating and preserving the natural environment. So basically, we're trying to raise meat in a sustainable and regenerative way. Uh, we don't worry about organic. That term is kind of nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. It was co-opted by the corporations and the government. So... Uh, if anything, we're far beyond organic or anything that would pass as organic. On to the carnivore. I'm on day 15. I weighed in this morning at 269.4, although that fluctuates greatly. Um, I'm more often than not still around 271. Um, I actually have wrote down what I had. I probably can still remember. So today... When I woke up, I had a, a big cup of coffee, one of those travel mugs. Um, I, I use heavy whipping cream, and that was it for the morning coffee. The second round after my morning chores where I milked the cows and fed the pigs and chickens and did all the, all the morning stuff, I came back in and had a second big travel mug of coffee. And in that one, I had the heavy whipping cream and also... Uh, a t tablespoon of butter just to get the fat content up in that. So uh, that was pretty satisfying. Then around about noon, I had five pieces of bacon and four eggs that I collected yesterday evening. So we're already mostly we're already egg independent. I'm getting these. Uh, we have free range chickens. And I, as I said in the other video, we don't, I don't feed them. I don't have a chicken coop. I don't have any protection for them at all. I do actually have all those things, but those are for the small chicks. When I get a small chick, I raise it up to about six months or well, not even anymore, but I raise them up until they have a fighting chance. And then I turn them loose out on the farm. We have four big dogs that like to chase everything that doesn't belong here away. They're trying to catch it, but they never do. I don't ever worry about the squirrels because I'm, they never can catch the squirrels. But anyway, none of the predators that chickens would have to worry about can get close enough to the house to cause an issue for the chickens. But if the chickens want to wander off and wander too far away, eh, you know, I don't have time to manage chickens in my life. So... We get more chickens than we need, and the ones that stay close to 
you know, the area around the home and that can make a good, healthy living in the woods and down by the pond and in the open spaces and, you know, all through the barn. Anyway, the chickens are having a great life. They're fat and sassy and they give us eggs. Basically, the hardest part about these chickens is uh, after raising them and turning them loose is finding where they put the eggs because the egg, um, the egg laying rotates. They'll pick a spot for a little bit and then they'll move on to a new spot and they'll move on to a new spot. So I'm hoping I can incorporate this in a way that's interesting for everybody where instead of it all just being this, I mean, it's crazy. It's if, you know, if you're paying uh, sprouts prices or whole foods prices for organic soy free blah 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 all this stuff that's i mean you know you better have a healthy income whereas carnivore can be spam and hot dogs and you know sardines but you know i think uh most of that areas are those areas are covered on youtube where my space is coming in is incorporating the permaculture, which permaculture is generally a lot more plant based. And I'm going to have to plant, do lots of planting on this farm, but I want to plant what my food eats because of all the health benefits of carnivore. And I don't think there's any, anything much out there about a carnivore or even keto, you know, friendly permaculture design or permaculture farm in practice that's made themselves known anyway. So that's, uh, basically where I am. I'm for, to recap. Yeah. I'm 15 days in the carnivore. I did it, you know, nine months ago, I did a six month stint as carnivore and got all the benefits. And so I don't have a lot of learning to do. It's really simple. You just eat meat. You can have a little bit of cheese or a little bit of dairy sometimes if dairy isn't, you know, something that your body reacts poorly to. Uh, there's some low-carb vegetables you can add in if you want to go back to keto. I think you can have 20 grams of carbs a day. I don't do that. I just eat meat. If I get hungry, I just eat more bacon. Um, I drink water. I do drink some unsweet tea just to change it up a little bit, but black coffee with heavy whipping cream and now butter, some unsweet black tea mostly, and then water is that's all I'm drinking right now. And then I eat my breakfast is usually about, well, my coffee with cream is kind of breakfast. And then in the midday after right around noon or so, I usually have some plate full of meat, like this morning's five pieces of bacon, four fresh eggs. And then I'll have about eight o'clock tonight, after I finish the evening chores, I'll have a plate full of meat that usually my wife prepares for me. And it can be, it's usually just a variety of meats. It might be uh, beef of some, ver you know, version. It'll be, it could be like, beef it could be a hamburger some you know some hot dogs and some bacon or it could be uh we did crab legs and shrimp a couple of nights ago and butter so you know whatever and then so if you i mean i guess i'm not technically doing the 16 hour uh intermittent fasting because the uh, heavy whipping cream and the coffee but most the bulk of all my eating is occurring between noon and 8 p.m and I'm, I'm not sure I can give up my heavy whipping cream. I just, I love that stuff so much. And I've got three cows, or I got two dairy cows, just so that I can harvest my own cream. I'm going to use mostly the milk is going to be for the hogs, but I'm going to bring it in first, scrape the cream off the top for my coffee, and then take the milk out and feed it to the the hogs. And I've got big plans for what I'm calling Hogtoberfest. So, um, you know, especially for local people, we're going to dig a pit. We're going to cook some hogs probably all throughout October, have camping and live music and lots of hog. <laughs> Basically, if you want something besides meat, you'll have to bring it yourself because that's all I'll be serving is freshly cooked pork. So anyway, 
I'm still getting used to this system. I've got actually, uh, this is my home recording studio. I have way too much stuff in here for uh, recording music, but I just am kind of adapting the equipment over to make this. So hopefully it'll turn out all right. And uh, I'll check in with you again. I'm not sure what the pace is going to be. I don't know if I'm thinking once a week for sure we'll do a check in with weight and recap, but I'll probably throw some interesting stuff in there about how I'm producing the food or, you know, where I find the eggs or I don't know. I mean, that there's enough funny animal videos out my back door that we don't ever have to look them up on the internet. So anyway, you want to uh, watch a hillbilly lose weight, get healthy raise a bunch of baby animals and just have fun come on back and we'll see what happens <laughs>